Okay, let's get into this lesson. Let's pray real quickly. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We pray that you will speak to our hearts and our minds. Uh, make us vulnerable to hear your word, God, and to receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm actually going to be doing a lot of reading, but let's just start with this little text. Let's go to chapter 2. Then we're going to come back to chapter 1 in Romans. Okay? Uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, it reads as follows. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man. Yeah, it started off kind of crazy, huh? The first line makes you say, huh? What you say now? Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. For wherein thou judges another, thou condemneth thyself. For thou that judges, you're doing the same thing. Go on somewhere and sit down. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them, against such, uh, which commit such things. And think of thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things and doeth the same, you're doing the same thing, that thou shalt escape, that you can get away from the judgment, even though you're doing the same thing. O despite thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. It's going to get good later on, y'all. But after. Thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Who will render to every man according to what he does. Look at somebody and tell them you're going to get judged for what you do. I got to go back to the first chapter and just kind of see what Paul was dealing with with this Roman church. And uh, I want to start with um, verse 4 in chapter 1. And it says, And declare to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of what? By the resurrection from the dead. He's declaring what his purpose was. By whom we have received what? Where's my, where's my people at with me? Y'all ain't with me today? But but whom we have received what? Grace. Grace and apostleship. For what? Obedience. For what? Obedience. To what? The faith. Among what? All For his name. Among whom are ye also the call among whom you the church is also called to all that be in Rome beloved of God called to be saints, saints believers that's us y'all yeah. grace be to you and peace from God our father and the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. let's jump over to uh, verse 14 he says I'm a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome. He's telling them why he felt obligated to preach and to share with everybody, church and the unchurch. Here's one of the most powerful scriptures that just woke me up, my Mawson, um, and you've heard it before. He says this, read it with me, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Okay, now listen, I, I had to, it kind of messed me up, but as many as times as I've read the scripture, it just did something to me this particular time. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Not ashamed of the word. I'm not ashamed of the purpose, the death and the resurrection and the purpose of Christ. He says, for it is the dudamus power. That Greek word power means dudamus, or it is the strength and the ability. 
Okay, he says it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation meaning deliverance. Okay, so he says it is the strength that will deliver to everyone that believes. For some reason, this did something to me this time. This time, it showed me that this is the answer for anyone to be delivered out of any gutter or any situation that they are in. He says that the word of God or the gospel is the strength. It is the answer. It is the ability to deliver anyone out of any situation. And the reason why the church is weak and the reason why we are weak is because we don't read the word. Y'all ain't got to say amen because I'm here to tell y'all. We just read here in the word of God. Let's, go, let's, let's, read, your, let's read your translation. Uh, read from 14 to 16 and do you get the message? Okay, the message. Please don't misinterpret my failure to visit you friends. You have no idea how many times I've made plans for Rome. I've been determined to get some personal enjoyment out of God's work among you, as I have in so many other non-Jewish towns and communities. But something has always come up and prevented it. Everyone I meet, it matters little whether they're mannered or rude, smart or simple, deepens my sense of independence and obligation. Interpendence and obligation. And that's why I can't wait to get to you in Rome, preaching this wonderful, good news of God. It's the news I'm most proud to proclaim. This extraordinary message of God's powerful plan to rescue everyone who trusts him, starting with Jews and then right on to everyone else. God's way of putting people right shows up in the acts of faith, confirming what scripture has, has said all along. The person in right standing before God by trusting him really lives. Okay, I like how that translation says that the word of God rescues. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear what he said, rescues? So I, I like that, that the word of God is rescued. So if we know anybody, even if it's us, and we're in a situation and we want to come out, how do we get rescued? Trusting in God through what? What are we, just, what are we talking word. about? We're talking about the word of God, right? Yeah. So tell me this. Tell me this. Paul makes a, he makes a proclamation. He says that the gospel is the key yeah. to deliverance. Yeah. I just have a question why nobody runs to the word anymore. Why are we not running, and, and, and when I say running to the church, I mean running to the gospel. Right. Because it seems like we're running from church instead of to church. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to try to find the answer before they get to church. Because yeah. you ask people, why you don't go to church? Why you don't? Well, I'm, I'm trying to get some stuff together. According to the word, you can't get it together until you get in the gospel. Because deliverance and salvation, the power comes through the word. So we know what the problem is? Lack of word. Say it. Lack of word. Well, he says, and the just shall live by faith. The next verse says, he says, he says, for therefore is the righteousness of God revealed. Therefore, I like the King James Version. He says, for therein. So in it is the righteousness, the state of being right, of God revealed, shown from faith, belief, faith, pistols, conviction of truth. Okay? He says, from faith to faith, as it is written, the justified, the just, shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Who's the just? We are. are you acting like it? No. <laughs> but the word says, but the just shall live by what? Faith. Faith meaning belief. Yeah. What is faith? Faith is the, come on, let's go to kindergarten. Let's go to the, faith is the. Faith is the. 
Can I see faith? No. Do I always feel faith? But I have to know faith and believe faith. Now, he says the just is my gas, y'all. He says, he says the just shall live by faith. How am I motivated? Through faith. Where do I get this gas from? Do I get it from Costco? Do I get it from Sam's Club? But faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word. So the reason why people are faithless is because they have no word. And the church is trying to get faith with our word. You got people that go to church every Sunday and ain't got no faith. People are dying in the church because they have no faith. You got to get full of faith, which means you got to get full of the word. Y'all playing. And then he says, give us this day our See, y'all, y'all good. You know it, but we ain't practicing it. Every day, don't y'all eat? How, how many? Because I do that. See, don't even start. She just said what I was getting ready to say. Do y'all know sometimes I go to bed thinking about breakfast? And sometimes at 11 or 12 o'clock at night, I'm, I'm hungry. And I have to convince myself, boy, just wait till in the morning you're going to eat. And my wife will tell you, maybe like 12 o'clock, she'll see me eat raisin brands or a bowl of cereal. Because I got breakfast on my mind at 11 o'clock at night. And I done went in there and started early. Uh, wait, wait. I, I hope this don't. I hope this don't. I hope this don't. I hope this don't throw y'all off. But this is this is a thought. This was a revelation that gave me. I don't know if it has anything to do with the text, but I thought about it this morning. But I, I, y'all ever heard this? Uh, y'all ever heard this saying? Don't spoil your appetite. Yeah. 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 How do you spoil your appetite? Because you know that there's a meal being cooked for you, and you start sneaking. Like last Sunday. My wife, she caught me. I went. I was. I was so hungry after church last Sunday, man, Michelle. I went home. I went in that cabinet, and I got this big old thing of cheese puffs that my goddaughter bought me that I don't have forever. And she saw me and she said, "Put that up. You' about to eat right now." So I was about to spoil my appetite, but you know what? This is what God. This is what God gave me in Revelation. He says. He says, "I prepared for for something in our righteousness." Okay, we spoil the godly appetite by doing things of the flesh. So let me put it like this. You spoil your appetite when you're single and you're having sex before marriage. I don't know if that have anything to do with the message today, but I just felt like, because it's called fornication. Y'all know that, right? So, so, you know, you can't even enjoy what you were going to get. Because you done already got it before. You been in the closet eating cheese puffs. You spoiling the appetite. You can't wait for dinner. That's good. Oh, oh, let me tell you. Every, everything that we say naturally has something to do with it. That's in the spiritual. You mess up the appetite. And the problem that we have in the church is our appetites are out of control. From heaven against. Now verse 18 he says, For the wrath of God is revealed, is manifest, is shown from where? Heaven against what? All un all what? And un of men, right? So I want y'all to understand that this scripture right here says, Whether it's in the world or whether it's in the church because he fooled around and put that word of all in there so because some of us think that because we in church that we untouchable and because I attend church and I have been water baptized and I got me a little tongue I speaks in that that when my sin is not going to be okay but I just read here he says the verse y'all read it for the wrath of God what from where? From Against what? All. Somebody say all. all. That means preachers, missionaries, church mothers, yeah, yeah. everybody.
everybody. All. Come on now. Hello. Read your translation. 18. But God's angry displeasure erupts as acts of human distrust and wrongdoing and lying to accumulate. Wait, read that again. But God's angry displeasure erupts as acts of human mistrust, wrongdoing, and lying accumulate. As people try to put a shrewd over truth. But the basic reality of God is plain enough. Open your eyes and there it is. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what God has created. So he read verse 19 and that he says because that which was made known of God is manifested or shown in them for God has shown it unto them so so in other words with the translation it says we as believers we know the truth most of us know the truth don't y'all know the truth we know right from wrong say it I know right from wrong even when I don't do it I know it it can be something as simple as uh, uh, my wife made me feel feel so bad the other day. It just really hurt my little feelings. She was right. She was right, but it hurt my feelings. It was little because it was. Let me see. I think it was Thursday. It was Thanksgiving, and I had. For Thanksgiving, I was real good during dessert. I took a little slice of, of they have three different cakes. And I took a little slice, real thin slice of each one. No, for real. They were really thin. To the part where they fall off, you know, it just fall off because it was so thin. So they felt, and I got each one. Plus there was a little cream pie and I got all of that. And uh, I warmed it up. I don't eat banana pudding. Uh, I warmed it up and I had some. I don't know what I had with it, but it was good. I had that for dinner. Yeah. So three hours later, we was in the bed watching TV and I came in the room 11 o'clock at night. I came in the room and I had a bowl of ice cream and a chocolate donut. And she just said, why are you eating it? You just ain't going to do right. <laughs> that ain't the part that hurt me. She said, I just don't care no more. Do what you want to do. That hurt me. I don't care what you do. You just do what you want to do. You can just die and I don't care. I'm on the outside now. That's what I felt. That's what my spirit was seeing. <laughs> so, all of that to say is even little small stuff yes, yes, yes. are unrighteous. Because the truth be told, Elder Vance, I really didn't have no business at 12 night, midnight eating no big old bowl of drumstick ice cream with the chocolate and I added walnuts to it and milk and two donuts on the side. I was like, Lord, if I die, let me die. If I die, please. No. I'm trying to help y'all with unrighteousness, y'all. Because because something, you know, for, for you, one thing is a sin and for me, another thing is a sin. It's on my conviction because I'm trying to get healthy. You know, and when I'm provoking or not being, preventing my healthiness, I'm sinning. Yeah. Amen, Tim? Amen. Okay. So, Paul deals with, uh, he deals with creation in verse 20. I'm going to just talk about it. He's, he's telling them that everything around us shows us that God is, that he exists. Okay, well, read, it, read 20 in your version. People have always been able to see what their eyes as such can't see. Wait, wait, read this again. I want y'all to hear this. Is, this is good. This translation. Read People it. have always been able to see what their eyes as such can't see. Listen to this. He says, you've always been able to see what your natural eyes cannot see. He said, you see it, 
even though you don't see it. Ain't that crazy? Uh, just say this. Yeah, I'll be acting dumb. Just say it. We acting dumb because you see it. It's, it's just like it's just like it's just like you know somebody for real. You are gonna stay with him? You can't see what kind of man. Yeah, they see it. <laughs> then people come to me and tell me, "Well, he like this and he like this," and you go like, "And you never saw that." You see what you don't see. Oh, not like that. Her translation, the Italian translation. You see what you want to see. Hello, somebody. Oh, uh, you like that? That's poetry, huh? <laughs> Me over there. That's poetry, baby. <laughs> okay. Read, finish reading it. Eternal power, for instance, and the mystery of the divine being. So nobody has a good excuse. What happened with this, what happened was this. People knew God perfectly well. But when they didn't treat him like God, refusing to worship him, they trivialized themselves into silliness and confusion so that there was neither sense nor direction left in their lives. Paul just gave us the answer of why people go crazy. He just said, he says, people knew God, but then they start trivializing, taking, taking, adding things to what is simple. Okay, read that again. That part. People knew God perfectly well, but when they didn't treat Him like He, like Him, like God, refusing to worship Him, God, they did what? Refused to worship. There, there it is. They know God. They refuse to worship means to acknowledge Him as God. They didn't acknowledge Him. They didn't worship Him, and what? They trivialize themselves into silliness and confusion. So what you start doing is in your mind you start talking to yourself and trying to make things that you know don't make sense, make sense. Make your own right. Okay, look what we're going to end up. Come on, read. They trivialize themselves into silliness and confusion so that there was neither sense nor direction left in their lives. They pretended to know it all but were illiterate regarding life. They traded the glory of God who holds the whole world in his hands for cheap figurines you can buy at any roadside stand. Wow. Yeah, so, so in other words, he said, this is how crazy Israel was. They knew God, but they started worshiping a little false items and stuff that had no, couldn't do nothing for you. He said, they, they started worshiping stuff that you can get at the swap meet. That's what he said. That's what he just said. That's what, that's, look, wait, 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 wait. Idolatry, y'all got to get what idolatry is. Idolatry is when you worship something, person, place, or thing. Person, place, or thing. Person, place, or thing. And the writer just said that that person, place, or thing is just as cheap as something that you can find at the swap meet. Hello. So y'all can worship a person and you, that's like getting an item from the swap meet. Where you've gone. Verse 24, he says, Wherefore God also gave them up unto uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. He says, okay, so the natural things that were supposed to happen, they done lost it. Who changes the truth? Who changes the truth? Who changes the truth? Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God? Who changed the truth of God? What the, we know what the Bible says. For years, we have accepted that homosexuality was a sin. Now, all of a sudden, in 2018, people are coming and say, well, there was a misinterpretation of the translation of homosexuality. Hello? Taking the truth of God Making it a lie. Uh -huh. Okay. And they worship and serve the create the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For the, for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. Okay. Disregarding uh, 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 passion, according to what my translation says. For even their women did change their natural use 
and two, that which is against. So, first of all, let me just say this. All the stuff that's going on in our culture now, this was written a long time ago, y'all. It ain't, it ain't new. This, this whole homosexuality and fornication and all, that stuff ain't new. It's in here. That's, this, it was written over a thousand something years ago. It, the, the thing is, is how we gonna deal with it and how we gonna accept it. You know? Um, and the reason why a lot of times I may focus at some point um, on certain things is because I keep hearing society trying to make the church believe things. You know, it's, it's almost, we didn't have to do this before, but it's almost now you gotta over you gotta, you gotta over, you know, before they would let little girls come up as tomboys. Oh, she's just a tomboy. She's just climbing up in the tree. It's just a phase. You can't do that no more in this society because if they look like a boy, the other little one's gonna come after them because they're gonna mistake it. It's, it's y'all get what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta make your, you got, you gotta put dolls in little girls' hands now, and you gotta snatch dolls from little boys now because society is saying, oh, let them be them. Let them be their purpose. Come on, y'all. So that may be what the world is doing, but the church has to teach. I promise y'all, you know, and believe me, this, this message ain't a homosexual message. It, it, it's really not. It's, it's about sin, okay? But I'm just trying to tell y'all where we are in our society and things that we have to do. You know, it's almost like you can't let the girls play basketball no more because the whole team is gay now. You know, you can't let the boys be models. You can't let them be actors because everything over on that side is, is you know, is, they, if they do, they got to be rooted and grounded in the truth so that when it comes against them, they can say, go on somewhere and sit down. I don't like no girls. Go on. My boyfriend outside the locker room waiting for me. Go somewhere and sit down. Hello? If you don't put it in them, I mean, it's kind of like when we grew up, you know, I grew up in the neighborhood, you know, it was just like, boy, you better not come up acting like that. So it was in our heads that you can't come up like that, you know. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the way I was taught. And even as they did not like to retain or keep God in their knowledge, they, they didn't want him. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which they are not, that are not to be. Okay, for those who don't know what reprobate means, reprobate mind, okay? Reprobate mind is when God, you, you want to do one thing and God just turns your mind to you doing what you want to do, even though it is against him. He'll give you the mind to make you think that what you're doing is right. And you can't come back. Once you fought God so much that he turns you over, he's like, okay, I'm just tired of you. I'm going to give you what you want. I'm going to make you think the way you want. That's reprobate mind. Okay? Now, he says, are we in the word? Yeah. Am I teaching something crazy or am I teaching the word of God? I just want to help y'all with this because I'm just, as, as, my, as my calling is as a man of God, I got to teach y'all what the word say. Right. Hello, this ain't, the, this ain't a, a doctrine of Bishop Kenneth Wells. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, he says, be filled with what? Come on, verse 25, what? They out of control, y'all, because he said being filled with all unrighteousness. Did he say that all? He said everything about them was crazy. Okay, so he says fornication, wickedness, covetousness, uh, ma ma maliciousness, uh, full of envy, murder, debate. Okay, verse 31, he's got all this stuff. Okay, now listen, verse 32. Well, read verse 32. Because he's, he's naming off all these things. Even disobedient to parents. I want the kids to see that too. Okay. Disrespecting parents. Read verse 32 in your translation. 
since they didn't bother to acknowledge God, God quit bothering with bothering them and let them run loose. And then all hell broke loose. Rampant evil, grabbing and gasping, vicious backstabbing. They made life hell on earth with their envy, wanted killing, bickering, and cheating. Look at them. Mean-spirited, venomous, fork-tongued, god-bashers, bullies, swaggerers, insufferable windbags. They kept inventing new ways of reckoning lies. They ditched their parents. When they, when they get in the way, stupid, slimy, cruel, cold-blooded. And it's not as if they, they don't know better. They know perfect, perfectly well they're spitting in God's face. And they don't care. Worse, they hand out prizes to those who do the worst things best. Mm. Did y'all hear that? They hand out prizes. King James says that, but they have pleasure in them that do them. Okay, I'm going to help y'all with this one and y'all going to really have a problem with me. Y'all going to be mad at me, okay? As believers, y'all, we're not supposed to be excited watching Empire. He got quiet. Come on, y'all. Greenleaf. You know I hate Greenleaf. <laughs> Greenleaf. Oh, I can't stand. Okay, I'm trying to... Cut. You're not supposed to be watching a whole bunch of murdering and backbiting and finding the... We get entertained off of this. Okay, can I just tell y'all how the devil has desensitized us? That's why a lot of times when things happen to us outside of TV, we're not phased by it. Because you don't watch this so much. Right, let me tell y'all, 30 years ago, the stuff that y'all see at, on ABC News, they wouldn't show that on the news. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even say, uh, be careful because what we're about to watch is a lot of graphics and all this kind of stuff. They wouldn't even show it. Now on the news, they show blood stains. They show all this kind of stuff so that when it happens to you in the natural, y'all drive by, y'all knuckleheads drive by real slow so you can see. I want to see. And you're going like, ooh, look at that. We're not even faced. We're not even devastated anymore. Why? Because TV. I remember I was driving the radio, driving to the radio station one morning. It was about five o'clock in the morning, and the street was blocked off. And uh, I, I was that person, real nosy, trying to see. I wanted to see, and they had a dead man in the car. He had gotten a car accident in the truck, and they had him just sitting there. And I was just sitting there going like, "Wow, that guy's dead." Went on to work, did my show. Now, my whole text. Takes me back to chapter 1, verse 2, where he says, you're inexcusable. Y'all remember that? Yeah. He says, because what you, let me, y'all heard my translation. Listen to this translation. Chapter 2, verse 1. He's talking to, now, now he's talking to the church people. He's talking to us. Read it. The people are on a dark spiral downward. But if you think that leaves you on a high ground where you can point your fingers at others, think again. Every time you criticize someone, you condemn yourself. It takes one to know one. Judgmental criticism of others is a well-known way of escaping detection in your own crimes and misdemeanors. But God isn't so easily diverted. He sees right through all such smoke screens and holds you to what you've done. Well, people that are not compassionate for people like if you know people who have weaknesses and stuff, okay, if they're not trying to help people and they're always judgmental, most of the time, them people are the ones that's doing something themselves. Because anybody, let me help y'all with this is why Paul was so compassionate. Paul, his testimony, he says, I was the worst of everybody. He called himself the chief sinner. And because of where he was, he wanted to help people. So when you see people that's judging folk, them Negroes got issues going on themselves. Because anybody that's been in something want to help somebody come out of it. Let me talk you through this. So the issue in this case was these people was pointing the fingers at folk, but they was doing the same thing. Church folk, we can't tell people not to fornicate when we fornicate Church people, we can't tell people not to be drunks when we drinking. Oh, yeah. 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 
The problem that we have with the church is we have a definition problem of what we can't do. Because the church has been approved to do any and everything. But the scripture says, come out from amongst them. Be ye separate from the world. God said it. And he gives all this stuff. Y'all just read a whole bunch of stuff. He said, you can't be, you don't want to be disobedient. You don't want to be liars, murderers, debaters, arguers, debaters, deceitful whisperers, gossipers. We can't do all that kind of stuff. Okay? People are looking, you know what Paul, he says that he says your life. Do y'all know what a living epistle is? Epistle just means writing. Okay? It just means writing. He says you are a living writing. In other words, he says you are a living Bible. That's all he said. If people won't read the Bible, but they'll read their life. Because you have said that you're a Christian. So if you say you're a Christian, I'm going to look at you and see what you do. And that's going to determine whether I want to be what you are. So he comes with this thing and he says, y'all messing up. Read, read verse, he says, um, read verse th uh, three in your translation. You didn't think, did you? That just by pointing your finger at others, you would distract God from seeing all your misdoings and from coming down on you, you hard. Or did you think that because he's such a nice God, he lets you off the hook? Be, better think this one through from the beginning. God is kind, but he's not soft. In kindness, he takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. Okay, so in other words... The radical life changes. God says, y'all ever heard this? My mother used to tell me this. She said, she would beat my butt and beat it real good. And you know what she got the nerves to say after she fit through? She said, I only did it because I loved you. And it hurts me worse than you. I'm like, girl, for real, you ain't got no wets on you. I'm light skinned. And don't be beating on me like that. I bruise easy. But she had the nerve, Joel, to tell me she loved me. I only do it because I love you. I'm only going to slap the heck out of you because I love you. Verse 4 in the King James says that God's whippings, his long sufferings, leads you into repentance. That's the King James Version. Here it says radical life change. Repentance. Radical life change. Repentance. Radical life change. Repentance. Okay. Verse 6. Did you read 6? No. Read it. You're not getting by with anything. Any refusal and avoidance of God's adds fuel to the fire. The day is coming when it's going to blaze hot and high. God's fiery and righteous judgment. Make no mistake. In the end, you get what's coming to you. Real life for those who work on God's side, but to those who are on, for, but to those who insist on getting their own way and take the path of less resistance, fire. How come people don't read, tell us about stuff like this no more? In, in other words, what he just read, he says, "Okay, keep doing what you're gonna doing, doing, but you're gonna pay for it." Wait a minute. I, see, I know. I just have to use my experiences, y'all. I don't know about y'all, okay? But my mother used to let stuff add up. No, for real. Because that's why we keep doing stuff, because we think we're getting away with it. But your mama, she's sitting there, your mama's sitting there going like, okay, mm, I'm going to let her get away with that one. Okay. <coughs> Wednesday come by, oh, he done did something else. Okay. Mm. He really playing with me today. He messing with my. You do something else. And then you start getting really crazy because you think mama and them ain't paying you no attention. And then you ever see, you start talking back and then moving your little neck. You know, and you just say, uh, and your mama and them, your mama and them going just like, okay, they're they doing with my patience. They, they're dealing with me. And you think in the casino slap fire from you that you're getting away from. It. So the next day, you're just going to do something else. You just keep getting closer and closer to that line. Closer and closer to that line. This is a, what he just read is what I'm talking about right now. You just keep 
getting closer and closer to that line. Then Friday comes. Mama didn't have a rough day at work. She tired, and you gonna play with her on Friday? And she said, "Oh no, Friday? Uh uh, no, uh uh." And then she takes you in that room. She beats you, and all of a sudden she beating you for everything. This is for Monday, little Negro. This is for Tuesday. And remember when you did this? Oh, this is when you slammed the door and kept on walking. Uh huh. And then you get, and you and then you cry so hard and you, y'all remember these kind of cries? <laughs> y'all remember them? You remember that one? <laughs> yeah, this you got the nerve to tell you, shut up! <laughs> what? What you say? Oh yeah, give me some more. As y'all have gone back to memory lane. Um, let me summarize this. I want to encourage y'all. Romans chapter 2 is the most, one of the most convicting chapters of lifestyles. Paul now tells them, and y'all can read it on your own. He starts dealing with circumcision and uncircumcision. I, I don't have time to go into that. But I just want i want to tell y'all this. He says, it's really interesting. He goes to this. He tells them. He says, how y'all going to let the uncircumcised live better than the circumcised? What, what, what do you mean by this circumcision and uncircumcision? Okay, because... Let me tell y'all, for a long time, that circumcision stuff threw me off. It was just so spiritual, but it's so simple, okay? Circumcised just means the cutting off of. In other words, in the church, the uncircumcised are those who are still living worldly. The circumcised are those who are living righteous. So Paul now says, how are you going to let the unchurched people outlive you and you in the church. He starts talking about the law. And the law is just the teaching. So he says, you got the teaching and those who don't have the teaching live better than you. Let me give you a good example. It's kind of like in the church, you know, we, we tell our young people, we say, don't wear hats in church. Okay? And, and they get mad. Because they don't understand just reverence and all that kind of stuff, right? Okay, so anyway, somebody who don't even come to church, and I've seen this. I've seen thugs come to church sometimes, and they'll take their hats off. Oh, I'm going to church, I'm going to take my hat off. The, those people are those who didn't have the rules, but they respect the rules better than those who know the rules. So he now says to the church, he says, you know the rules. In other words, why are my kids being being influenced by the ones who are, huh? Why are my kids acting like I brought y'all up to live this kind of way? Why are you acting like baby now? You taking on the custom and the lifestyle of somebody else. So he now challenges the church. Why are they living better than you? Y'all read it on your when you get home, read it on your own. Romans chapter 2. Read it in the King James. And then do get the, the message Bible and read it. I'm telling you, it's challenging because for real, I work with some people that don't know Jesus. And their moral ethic is better. There's some people culturally, they ain't thinking about Jesus at all. They don't cuss because they a good person. Their mama didn't cuss. They came up very proper. Their etiquette. These are uncircumcised people whose conduct is better than some church folk. You can walk in a room, somebody just went to church and shouted all day, and they the hell raises in the office. 
Church folk are worse than some people. Hello, somebody. Don't act like. Got the Jesus bumper stickers. Cussing people out. Flipping people off. Acting just like Madea. Madea is a good example of the uncertain. I want us to be better, y'all. Yeah. This word is to challenge us to make us live better. Hello, somebody. That's that's all it is. All that when we read this word, it's it's just a check. Am, am I living according to what God? Not how I think, but according to what God. I'm gonna stop, y'all. I'm gonna stop because I started. Y'all gave it to me early. I think I done went about forty minutes. It was good. Was it good? Okay, I got more ten minutes. No, I hope you've been blessed and encouraged by what you've seen and heard during this Spirit of Love Christian Church presentation. Our church is located 2898 North East Street, San Bernardino. If you would like to share in giving, you may do so at Zell, at Spirit of Love Christian Church, PayPal, at Spirit of Love SB at gmail.com cash app money tag sol church